two generations before my dad were sharecroppers, which meant they cropped land for a share of the crop. Didn't own much, but they worked for other farmers. But in 1938, my grandfather made enough money to buy a part of this farm. My dad ended up buying the joining farm, and there, at one time there were two separate dairy farms on this property. Actually, it's the location of where the dairy barn is now on the farm. I grew up dairy farming and ended up going to the University of Georgia, majored in dairy science, and worked in Atlanta for a couple of years, but then came back to the farm in partnership with my dad and uncle and put both dairies together. In 1986, Mr. Carter sold out of the dairy business and transitioned into a beef cattle hay farm with thoughts of developing the farm into an educational agritourism destination. This building goes way back. That's right. And this is where the cows used to come in to get milk. I mean, we had 12 at a time, which was at that time a, a, a medium-sized dairy. I think we milked about 200 head of cows at the time. You know, and it's neat how you have it set up now. People can sit up here learn about the whole process and it is fascinating. One of the primary objectives is so that when kids go in the grocery store the next time with their mom and get that gallon of ice cream or, or the milk that it didn't just grow in the stock room back there it was growing on a farm. That's one of the things that we want to teach to this community is that you know farmers do matter. When I sold out, Jake was six and loved the farm and followed in my footsteps everywhere we went. Fast forward a few years, he went to the University of Georgia, majored in business management. So he began to try to figure out how to invest all of his time and sweat equity in the farm. So finally one day he came up with an idea of, of the agritourism. And the rest is history, but with a big future. That history is not gone. That's right. I mean, one of the things that just, you know, tickles us to death is the next generation, right? I mean, my dad, you know, trusting me to take, take on the farm and run it. Maybe one day I'll have that with my kids if they so choose to want to become a farmer. If there's one thing I've learned about farmers, it's a seven day a week job. Yep. It is all day. And so you said, I want to be a farmer and we want all this. I tell a lot of people it's not a nine to five. Sometimes it's a five to nine. Um, and it is a calling, it's a love, love of the land, love of watching crops grow, things uh, flourishing and producing, I mean, that's what keeps us going. And the community aspect, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we did open the gates. For years, our gates stayed shut. We didn't want anybody in the farm. It was just like, this is our farm, we don't want anybody to come. And we had a lot of people showing up, David, asking us a lot of questions about agriculture. And, and we decided there was an opportunity there to provide a place for families to come out and enjoy spending time together while learning about agriculture. And that's what we decided to do in 2006. And I've actually been coming here for years, and it's been neat to watch it grow. It seems like every year you have something new that comes along. There's a Bell's Barn right, right behind us. That's Tell right. me about the experience that kids get at Bell's. Kids can come here and have an interactive experience with farm animals. Of course, the goats and the horses and chickens and uh, some cows. I mean, we just have a lot of great farm animals that kids can see up close and personal. There's tons of activities here. We have the giant jumpy pillow. Sure. That's a blast. I've always been infatuated with the corn cannon. There you go. <laughs> Tell me about this. So yeah, I mean, the corn cannon is just fun. I mean, you, you, where else can you go and get, get to shoot the actual uh, corn, right? I mean, yeah. we're, we're shooting these at targets. we got Bigfoot out there. we got your favorite or least favorite SEC football team on targets. So we're just not going to hit Georgia target. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, we'll leave that one alone. All right. Show me how it's done, Jake. All right. So let's see. You said you're not allowed to hit Georgia. I, I'm not going to hit Georgia. <laughs> I'm going to shoot that Tennessee. <laughs> Oh, Tennessee! <laughs> Tennessee gets it. Down go the balls. <laughs> Bama doesn't often lose, but today, they're going down. And you're not going to go hungry here. Tell me about the, the food options you have. We specialize in our, our, our baked goods. The fall of the year, we have the apple cider donuts, the fried pies, the homemade ice cream grown with the fruit that we raise here on our farm, strawberries and peaches. And springtime of the year, it's the strawberry shortcake. My mom, who's Mimi, has an old family recipe that's been passed down for generations and creates a strawberry shortcake. And it's just one of the things that people come out to enjoy here on our farm. So lots of sweet treats, because I know when I go somewhere, that's what I look forward to is the food. So we want to have something that folks can come out and look forward to experiencing here at the farm. 
but there's also the corn maze. I know a lot of work goes into that. When you see it from that aerial That's view, right. it's pretty amazing. That's right. I mean, there's several miles of path out there in that cornfield, and it may take you 30, 45 minutes to get through, or less than that. We have a kid maze kids can go to if they don't want to spend a long time out there, but it's always a fun activity to do to navigate through that corn maze for sure. Let's go see! If you start hearing a squealing, that means the pig races are about to happen. They're not squealing because they're upset. They're about, they're having fun out there. That's right. I mean, we're one of, one of the things that families enjoy watching together is a pig race. And we have 12 different pigs, three different races of four. They run for Oreo cookies and milk. I mean, who wouldn't run for that, right? <laughs> I mean, these pigs are trained to run. And when they hear the crowds coming, they know it's about race time. And of course, the, the names like Kevin Bacon and Chew Bacon and, you know, Squilly Nelson. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of pig names out there. We're proud to have those pig races. I imagine y'all in a giant meeting coming up with all these <laughs> yeah. great names you're like all right our work is done and you gotta love they're not just running there's a very epic moment on the third race you know pigs love water we have an olympic sized pig swimming pool that's 20 foot long and as they get to the edge of it you know the first one it only takes one to jump and the rest of them realize they may not get oreo cookies and milk when they get back in the house so they're they're fighting for that oreo cookie and milk so that's what they're running for I love what I see behind me. A lot of people, I guess, it's probably the last thing they do before they leave. Absolutely. I mean, when October rolls around, you can't leave here without getting your pumpkin. I mean, yeah. that's, this is pumpkin season, and we're just right in the middle of it. You do grow pumpkins here. This yeah. probably isn't the ideal climate. Tell me about the challenge. Right, so we do try to grow a few pumpkins. Mainly it's the ornamental type, the decorative style pumpkins. And our nighttime temperatures and humidity prevent us from growing like the really big pumpkins, but we do outsource those to local farmers and friends that we know that we can bring those in so that we can meet that demand. But we do try to grow what we can here for sure. What do you see over the next generation with this farm? You know, my dad has allowed me to sort of take the farm and, and come up with ideas and do things. And I think that's the key is to let the next generation, but they have their own ideas. I mean, as the community evolves and asks us questions about things, maybe there's some opportunities that we could get into down the road. And I think that's the, to the next generation to decide. I mean, my dad allowed me to, you know, make changes and do things aside from the dairy. And I, I want to give my kids that same opportunity if they so choose. All year round, the Carter family and their Southern Bell farm will be baking new pies, squeezing fresh drinks, racing the pigs, dreaming up new creative farm fun activities, and of course, restocking their corn cannons for anyone who wants to take a crack at their rival.